Welcome everyone, this is Michael from the Marks Group Live, happy to be reviewing tips for using Zoho Sheets effectively with you today. Um, after this video is over, please feel free to email us at support at marksgrouplive.com for any questions about this topic or about anything else Zoho. Also, be sure to rate this class as well, helping out your fellow Zoho users and helping us to improve our video library. Zoho Sheets is a spreadsheet, and it's a pretty good one at that. In today's short lesson, I'm going to share with you six simple tips for using this powerful piece of software. And here they are in short form. First, let go of Excel. Second, use worksheets. Third, use VLOOKUPs. Fourth, use conditional formatting and colors. And fifth, share your work. Before we get into our Zoho screens, one word of advice. If your screen does not look exactly like mine, don't panic. Your Zoho instance might be set up slightly differently from mine, and there may be a few differences in some of the screens. Most of what I demonstrate today should work across different versions of Zoho with minimal differences. If you try to replicate what I'm doing and you get stuck, drop us an email at support at marksgrouplive.com and we'll see what we can do to help you out. Ready? Let's get started. There we go. I'm going to create a new spreadsheet now, so I can either go to docs.zoho.com and then select the Create button and then Spreadsheet in the drop down, or I can go to sheet.zoho.com and get straight to it from there. That's what I've done on the screen off to the right side of your screen, in that window there. Um, I'll create a new spreadsheet right now, but later on in this lesson, as I demonstrate some of the advanced techniques, I will switch to one that we've already created. As with most aspects of Zoho, I make a new one off to the right. What's interesting is I can also upload I can upload a, either an Excel file, a new Excel file, an Excel S file, SXC, ODS, CVS, CSV, and TSV with a maximum file size is 10 megs. So I've got a staggering array of options there. But right now I'm just going to create a new one. All right. So first tip. Of, that we've got today is this is not Excel. <clears throat> if you've lived through more than one or two versions of any application, you'll know that features and menus move around, user interfaces change, you just get used to a changing landscape, while all of the features that you're used to are still probably available somewhere. The truth is Zoho Sheets has more features than most users will ever need, and you'll find them all for reference under there. The, um, the function reference area, which is absolutely brilliant. I love having it there. Um, if Zoho Sheets doesn't have a feature that you need, then you're probably already working or you should be ready for a more professional package like SPSS, the open source version of it, which is PSPP. There's the R programming language, which you might be working in. I believe that's MATLAB. That's the symbol for MATLAB. There's Maple, and that's Wolfram's Mathematica. So you may be working in more complex software if, um, if Zoho Sheets doesn't do it for you. Another tip, of course, is that if you're working with a large data set or if you have uh, a large number of calculations in your spreadsheet, uh, you may need to go to something that's hosted or that's uh, located on your desktop or on your laptop rather than a web application. There are limits to what, um, to the kinds of work that we can use, that we can do with a web-based application. All right, next up, number two, worksheets are good. A single spreadsheet can have lots of tabs in it. There's another sheet. I can have lots of worksheets and of course give your worksheets names. So um, summary, and then maybe this will be our debits. Here we'll have credits. 
here we have uh, fixed assets and then we have um, filing cabinet um, paint supplies for a very strange business. But we can have multiple tabs or multiple worksheets within a single spreadsheet. <clears throat> um, breaking up your work across different uh, worksheets makes sense insofar as you can tailor the visual appearance of each worksheet to suit the data that you're analyzing. So you can cluster similar types of um, data in, in, uh, together. By contrast, I'm sure you've seen spreadsheets where somebody tries to put all of the data onto a single spreadsheet and you just need to scroll forever to find some specific column that may not be related to any of the columns that came before. For example, a few years ago, my business partner and I were assessing the viability of a bunch of different conferences that we might attend. Here we go. I've got it there. We used one worksheet as an overview for each co uh, conference that we might attend, but then we used another worksheet for it um, to calculate costs, to estimate the costs for attending each conference. Our first sheet then referenced the total cost in the second sheet so that we could get a sense of um, the overall costs associated with the conference without necessarily having to look at all the details. Of course, you might be wondering how we got a calculation from column C in this worksheet over into column D in this worksheet. And that answer to that is our, our next tip, our third tip. Here we go. VLOOKUPs, yes. <clears throat> Use VLOOKUPs to save your sense. Let me be clear. I don't like VLOOKUPs. I absolutely adore them. They're great. They're powerful. They're cool. They're just one of the best features that you're going to find in a spreadsheet. <clears throat> and the sooner you get to deal, learn how to deal with VLOOKUPs, the happier you will be in your computing and your spreadsheet life. So, in my previous example, I mentioned that we had a spreadsheet with a basic conference information on one worksheet, but we had specific detailed calculations on another. What we've got here is a perfect example of a use for a VLOOKUP, and here's how we did it. First, I assigned a unique identifier to each of the conferences here. So, oh, that's not right. That's uh, Professional Association of Diving Instructors. That's better. Um, so, I assigned a unique identifier to each of these conferences. That's it right there. There's AMFT, DeVacy, ASECT, IEEE, NAWI, and PADI. Then, over here, I copied the codes. So let me just do it this way. I'm just going to grab a bunch of them right there, and I'm going to paste them into the conference, um, into the conference costs uh, worksheet. And I'm actually going to change my fill color there to black. I'm going to change my text color to a yellow, make it bold, because this just makes it easier for me to see my information. Now, I could type the full conference name, but that would be tedious. So I'm going to create what's called a vertical lookup, a VLOOKUP, and it's a wonderful thing. So here I'm going to look at my function library. I'm going to look for VLOOKUP, and there it is. So this is basically does a lookup. It says, hey, look for this value somewhere else over here. And where you find it here, I want you to grab the data that's there. Let's see it in action. Equals V cup. And then I'm going to look for what's in a cell A2. Then I'm going to say I want to find it in the overview tab between cells, I think it's A2, and let's say... Uh, cell D99. So I just give it a range of where I'm going to find it. 
you can see that range here from A2 to down here. Actually, let's go to C99 here. And then I want it to tell me the data that's in, that's the first, that's the second column. So I want it to tell me the data that it finds in the second column. And I'm going to type a zero. That means the data, don't assume that it's alphabetically sorted. If you have a large number of items in that you're looking up, uh, or if your lookup reference area has uh, hundreds of records, you may want to specify uh, uh, alphabetical order. Uh, in this case, in most cases that I've worked with, it isn't essential. So let's see what happens. There it is. AAMFT corresponds with this. What this a little app, what this little function up here has done is, it's looked up AAMFT over here, and as soon as it finds it, it takes the second column over to the right of that point. We can do the same thing, of course, with location equals v lookup a2 and the range is in the overview sheet a2 to c99 and I want the third column over at this point and we're still unsorted and now we know that that conference is in Austin, Texas. I'm going to show you another trick here because it's really cool. Huh. I don't like that NA, that not applicable. It gives me that because it says, oh, well, there's nothing in A2, so I can't do a lookup. The lookup doesn't work. So I'm going to change that ever so slightly. I'm going to say, if A2 is not empty, then do the V lookup. Otherwise, just put in nothing, put in a blank. And now, there it is. Let me add, uh, let me actually do that here as well. First, well, actually, let's make sure this formula works. Austin, Philly, Philly, Washington, Honolulu. Austin, Philly, Philly, Washington, Honolulu, and LA. Good, that's working correctly. Let's put in that little, that little if statement. If A2 is, um, is not blank, then go ahead and do the V lookup. Otherwise, Put in a blank and now we're done let's see if that works nicely as well there it is so if there's nothing in a2 then it won't try to do the lookup let me do one more here um, let's do CEC council hello for exceptional children Boston MA now, if I've done this correctly, in my conference costs, when I type in CEC here, it should fill in my lookups. There they are. This is how we get information from one part of my spreadsheet into another part of the spreadsheet. We do a lookup. Incredibly powerful function. So let me, uh, let me see. Oh, that's right. I'm going to calculate if let's say I've got some costs here calculated my hotel cost per night is a hundred and I have four nights in a hotel so that will be equal to e2 times f2 and then total costs let me hide that of course large spreadsheets are why you want to have wide monitors so that's equals the sum of hotel costs and total food costs and conference booth and electricity and I believe I've got another cell in there Wi-Fi electricity and Wi-Fi there we go so as I get more information here total days is six days at $15 of food per day my total food cost is H2 times I2 Conference booth is 1,500. Electrical is 150. Wi-Fi is usually horrendously expensive. So we see that my total conference cost here is $2,390. But now I'm going to grab that cost back here. 
equals, I'll put in my if, uh, a2 is not equal to, is there something in a2, then do a vlookup, vlookup, I'm going to go with a2 is my key value, I'm going to find my data in the conference costs spreadsheet, and it's between cells A2 and I think, yep, A2 and C99. Don't worry about that. A2 to C99. And I'm looking for the third, I think it's the third row over. One, two, three. That's the third row over. Oopsie. A2 to C99. It's my third row over, and we'll say that my data is unsorted. Uh, zero. That's what I'm looking for there. And if that isn't, if there isn't something there, there we go. 2,390. So as I get other costs in here, As I got other costs in here, they're going to be filled in here. This is a VLOOKUP, and it is probably the single most useful function or the single most non obvious function that I've ever found in a spreadsheet. Uh, this is absolute magic. Okay, so tip four use conditional formatting. Let's say that I can afford any conference that costs less than $3,000. To speed up my ability to see this information easily, um, I'm going to do a simple calculation on the values in column D here. And I'm going to do it in the most primitive way. Actually, Zoho has some really cool features in terms of conditional formatting, and we can certainly do a deeper dive into that if you're interested. Let us know again, support at marksgrouplive.com. Right now, I'm just going to set up a simple conditional format using the classic format. I'm going to say any value that is larger than, let's say if the cell value is greater than 4,999, I'm going to say, oopsie, there we go. I'm going to say make that red and make the text color white. There we go. For some reason, it thinks I've got large values in there. So here I can see that the conferences I can go to are this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. But I obviously can't go to those other conferences because they cost more than $5,000. Uh, we can set up multiple conditions, actually. We can set it up so that um, all the values between 0 and 5,000 uh, are on a scale. Um, data um, using conditional formatting is a really powerful way um, to create, uh, to, as, uh, to assign meaning to your data. Using, um, using color uh, is a very helpful thing because it allows you to focus on the critical information that you have to deal with. Um, it allows your brain to process things more quickly than if you don't have color. Uh, it makes it faster for our eyes to search out the information that we're looking for. One of the ways that I actually use conditional formatting in practice on a regular basis is when I'm assessing student work and I'm assigning uh, point values to student answers. And uh, I say that a good point value is, uh, has, a color, has a green color, a neutral point value, so an average kind of uh, value on a question is has no color or has a yellow color and a poor uh, performance on a question uh, has a red color and that just helps me to see at a glance what a student's performance is like or what, what an overall class performance is like. I could get to see whether a specific question or a column in my spreadsheet is more green than red. Um, it's a powerful visualization tool. Okay. Tip five. Tip five. Oopsie. I go to where I need to go. 
tip five is here. Share your work. Zoho gives you two different ways to share your work. You'll find those up in the right corner. You can either give people access to it for collaboration purposes. This is the conventional kind of share that you might find in a Google document, for example. Uh, or you can publish it and allow anybody to view it. Or you could embed this spreadsheet in a blog or on a web page. Um, so, and then give people the opportunity to access the data. So let's take a quick look at both of these. On the, the publish option, I can publish this spreadsheet within my organization. So anybody that's part of my Zoho installation can get it, and I can either allow or disallow that people to export the file. I can hide and lock formula cells so people can't actually mess with the formulas. I can also publish the spreadsheet to the external world, again, with the same, uh, uh, same uh, parameters for sharing. And this makes it accessible to anybody who has the link. I'm going to cancel on that for the time being. The other version of sharing is the more common one, the one that you might, might be more accustomed to. I can assign I can assign sharing to either people that have access, so I explicitly give access to the document. I can give, I can share this document to anybody in my organization. I can put a password on it and give it to the public. So, for example, I can um, I can distribute this more openly and then give the password only to people whom I trust, uh, or I can simply make it accessible on the web. The other thing that I can do, though, I can specify collaborators. So, Michael F at MarksGroupLive.net. Actually, it's MarksGroup.net, and I can specify <clears throat> whether that user has read-only access, can read and make comments, can write files, or actually is a co-owner, which is a handy feature when you are actually. Um, when you need somebody else to have equal control over the document, or when you're trying to sign off, uh, hand over the document to another person, and you're trying to write yourself out of the document, it helps to have a co-owner, because at that point, the co-owner can delete you as a user from the document. Notification uh, option to notify through email. Hi, Michael. Take a look at these numbers. And then I can share that. There I am. I can change permissions after the fact. And that's all it takes. Okay. Sorry about that. Here's bonus tip number six. I don't think I've got bonus tip number six here. No, I haven't. But bonus tip number six. Let's go here. Send us an email at mark support at Mark's Group Live. Uh, dot com if you have any questions about Zoho Sheets. It's a bonus tip and it's a good one. Let's uh, go back over what we've accomplished in today's set, a very short session. Today, we looked at how the fact that Zoho Sheets is not the same as Excel, but it's still very good. We looked at the concept of using worksheets in your work. We took a look at VLOOKUPs. Uh, we actually learned how to use a VLOOKUP and why you want to use it. Uh, we took a quick look at conditional formatting, and we looked at the fact that Zoho Sheets helps allow, makes it possible for you to share your work. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Check out our library for other training videos like this one. If you have any suggestions for other classes or for questions that you may have about Zoho, email us at support at Marks Group Live, and thanks for viewing.